Hello, in this video I'm asking the question, should we self-host our Google Fonts? Which is a question I've been asking myself a lot over the last six months since I've been doing this. And I have seen some performance improvements, but I've also messed up sites and I've drawn some wrong conclusions. And generally I felt out of my depth because there are plenty of people who are more knowledgeable on performance than me, who have different opinions on whether we should or shouldn't. Finally, I feel I have a reasonable understanding of what I need to consider. I still have some questions and things quickly change with Google and browser support generally, but I thought it might be useful at this point to share my thought process on one particular client site and why I decided to self-host Google Fonts on it. And I've still got the dev version of that. In a later video, I will cover how to do this as there are different techniques to being able to locally load. I tried to do it all in one video and it really was too much. This one's gonna be fairly long as it is. Senior engineers at Google are generally positive about the benefits of self-hosting fonts. They're mostly concentrating on the fact that this gives you control like how fonts load where Google CDN doesn't and improves your visitor's experience. But I'm also aware that with this comes some responsibility, some technicalities you need to consider. And I think it's very easy to end up in a worse position for self-hosting. But I'm gonna cover that at the end with some proper pros and cons, which I've included, of course, on this document if you don't have too much time to listen to me waffle on. And I'm gonna do something which I don't normally do in my videos. I don't tend to monetize because I am talking about products which I trusted for a long time and most people have already bought those products. But here there is a new product which I've just bought which is kind of relevant to what I'm talking about here. It's a code snippets plugin. There are other ones out there. What's different about this one is it allows you to load your snippets up to the cloud so you can collect them on different sites. And what I really like about this and why it seems more relevant, it's got a conditions builder. When I was doing my last video on performance, I was talking about preloading images and I really hadn't got a way to be able to preload those conditionally to pages or collections of pages. Well, this helps with this. So I, I grabbed this one straight away. It's new, it's on a lifetime deal. The, the vibe I get from the author, it's not like most things I will promote that I've used them for a long time. So I feel safe doing this one's more of a gamble, but the guy seems really on the ball and nice. He's really helpful and he's implemented a number of things for me but he has given me a discount the best discount available at the moment because I was just helping him really with his own main library which they have in this plugin to add in stuff for beaver builder so it's got its own section so I was helping with that and without asking he gave me the best discount so if you buy it it will be cheaper than what I paid for um, I think he does run some discounts anyway let's just have a look on the top yeah there's one running although it says it runs out today it may come back 20% but I've got the 25 on that for the moment so if that's of interest I'll definitely be covering this because I'm at the moment I'm trying to build up my own collection of performance ones particularly here for Beaver Builder which won't be included with what he's doing which I want to share in later videos okay enough of that but yeah it's affiliate so I will get a uh, you know, a kickback from this one. So just so you're aware of that, but if you want to support the channel, then that would be great. Okay, again, delaying things a little bit, I want to have a word on the site that I'm talking about here. So this is a site that has gone live. It looks like a fairly simple site. It has got this stuff going on and it has got this pop-up as well. And why I want to talk a little bit about this, it wasn't as straightforward as what I've shown in other videos. So on my performance site here, I use just Beaver Builder only uh, on a US server with different landing pages. And pretty much all I needed to do to get good mobile scores on Google PageSpeed Insights was optimize the images. I do a few other tweaks, but generally it was getting 100 or you know 90, 96 to 100 on all of them really without doing anything. This isn't the case with this one, even though it looks as simple as many of those because of all of these extra things. I've indulged myself a little bit using one of my uh, favorite add-ons for Beaver Builder Power Pack. So it's got some animations in there. Pop-up Maker is bringing in its own JavaScript. So I've got Gravity Forms bringing in their CSS on the actual page because there's a hidden page within the page. So there's a lot going on with this. And in fact, you know, if we look at the waterfall for it, it's not just what the plugins are calling in. I don't quite know how it works, but there's several files here which will be coming from WP includes because they will be referenced by the plugins and then bringing in stuff that's in WordPress 
So there was a lot loading in the first place and no problem if all I wanted to do was to test with GT Metrics a desktop view of it so I can kind of show how wonderful my performance is of my page builder. But with Core Web Vitals in mind, I need to slow things down times four to replicate a 3G connection as they do on Google PageSpeed Insights. And then I see out of the box that I've got some issues with what I've added there. It's making it difficult to pass on the largest contentful paint, which is the largest element in the viewport. And we are, these is slowing things down times four. So it's hard for me to pass with that. What I would generally do, and it's relevant to this conversation, is with a site like this, which is UK based, um, really I'm only going to have visitors going to my UK server from the UK and what I find is if I had this site on my US server which this one is it would perform better it's easier because there's a latency effect with having to travel to the nearest server that Google provides so what I tend to do is to test on the Chrome browser using Lighthouse within this, put it in incognito mode. And because I'm out of the country, I use a VPN to put me in the UK. And then the score is probably likely to be more realistic to what I'm going to see in the field data, because that's all that really matters. So I don't need to obsess too much about <laughs> trying to shave something off until I can get this one where I want it. Because as long as I get this close enough, that's probably what I'm likely to see in terms of field data. I think that's important and also comes into my equation with font loading locally as well. Okay, so on my performance site, I was able to get away with, in fact, no caching gave me good results, but I put the caching on basic caching to help with the load impact with letting people know about it and asking them to go to the site. Here, I really needed to do something else that would minify, defer and delay my JavaScripts, which were getting in the way of loading the largest contentful paint. They were slowing down the loading of the DOM as they have to reference all of these kind of things. And that's where WP Rocket, which I generally use for clients, came into use here. I'm affiliate for those as well and what it did is it reduced my requests generally down to on that first load from 55 to 24 it hasn't disappeared it's just not there on the initial load so it clears that up and actually the size doesn't really matter it's just about what's loading when when we're coming to the largest contentful pain so having done that and I think it's important you know that then I get things going into the green for the live site then it became a question of whether I want to go that extra step to try and shave off a little bit more by locally loading my fonts again knowing that there's this latency thing and all my people are going to be all the visitors really for my client are going to be coming from the UK whether to do that but mostly what did it because it was an extra step and this was supposed to be in a quick web build this one um, was really the annoying font swap that I got and that's really the main reason why I'm locally loading in this case. I just want to call out to uh, Dave Bloom, who's of Soul Plugins, some great plugins for Beaver Builder that he does. He's a great community member. He's always challenging us with kind of amusing, but insightful comments. And he was talking about how he'd noticed some terrible font swapping that goes on with a lot of blogs that he went to. He's reading and then suddenly it swaps over to the new font. I see this in increasingly so and maybe I might be guilty of it as we get obsessed about performance we're forgetting about the user's experience I think Google will probably work this out later I think certain things which defer things I don't really want to call them out because they might not be guilty but I notice it with Nitro Pack which does an excellent job at instantly giving you a good result but I tend to find that that delays the font so you'll get that kind of thing and that was the issue here with this one so if you come to this page you'll see I've left the video but here it is so I did a little this I wanted to show you this in action on the right hand side we have the dev side with the Google fonts being loaded and it's also got WP Rocket on this as well. That's important to know. And I've slowed things down to a 3G mobile connection. So slowed down times four, reload this here. You see the system font comes in here. It's set to a font display swap and it stays there. Look, this one, which is the live site has gone instantly to it. So it wasn't too bad on the desktop view going at normal speed. Then, you know, it swaps over, but the flash was too much and I think this is if this font was very similar to a system font in size and its style I probably wouldn't have bothered with this extra step on it but here there was a flash now I should mention something here 
Font display equals swap. This is a command that you can give, which is mostly supported in the 90s for browsers, but it isn't added by Google CDN. This has been added by WP Rocket, and it does that because Google PageSpeed Insights flags up without something like this that to watch out for invisible text. And that's because the Chromium browser, or the Chrome's browser actually, holds off. Um, it, it does flash invisible text. It waits some time before it introduces font swap. So that's the reason for it. Same with, I think at the moment, Firefox. I've got a link to where you can find this out. But I think Safari and definitely Microsoft's The Edge, or Edge, um, it goes straight into swap anyway. So what Google's saying as a thing you need to correct is related really to their browser. But it's done by WP Rocket. It doesn't improve in performance, just changes how this behaves. So it goes straight into that font swap, which I don't like. On this side, what I've done is I've put the font display because I'm locally loading them to block. And then I've preloaded these. So the fonts are at the top of the waterfall. So that's, you know, I, again, it's really where you need to make an individual choice where they're going to bother, depending on how much that's going to bother you. But we're slowing down your browser to take a look how things behave, because you get how it's going to be for mobile users. Okay, I will just mention something on WP Rocket. I've mentioned that I already add that in, but and I'm using them here. They also add in a few other default improvements. One of those is that there is normally two requests to Google CDN, one for the Starsheet, one for getting the fonts. They combine that into one, so improve that. They also pre-connect to the fonts. So as soon as your site can work out that there are Google fonts there, then it's pre-connecting, same as like pre-loading, so bring those forward as well. So pre-connect is really when you're connected to something that's off the page, but doing a similar thing. And as mentioned, it also adds this font swap. So there's a couple of things that it does to improve the performance right out of the box, which you wouldn't normally get. So if I was testing with Cache Enabler, which I use, it probably wouldn't, um, in, in terms of the speed, it probably wouldn't uh, get that benefit that WP Rocket gives me, but it'd be very minor, I think, and it will depend on what else is loading. Okay, so here's just how i would loaded things in my CSS, and this is how the, the preloads. Here it's been set up, um, as I would put it in with WP Code Box, but you can just put the links in directly into the head section of your theme, which is probably the easiest way. Let's have a look now at the speed, because this is where I felt there was initially some compromise. I'm using something new, which is called Speed Vitals, which I quite like. Let me just go and bring it up by going to first the dev site where the Google CDM through the theme is loading. And here it is. So it's Speed Vitals. It's in alpha. What I like about it is it does the same as Google Page Speed Insights, but it's got more options. If you go to standard mobile, then it's going to be the same. What I like about it is it's more like me with my local testing with Lighthouse because I can set it to United Kingdom, which is going to improve the, the look there. But I think this is representing what I need to know. And what we're getting here with no preloading, of course, because you can't, well, technically you could preload a Google CDN font, but it's not a good idea because they changed the files there. So they warn against that because you might do it and it works for a little while and then you won't know when it's broken. So really preloading is only something that's an option if you're self-hosting. And I wanted to show you something, didn't I, just to prove that the fonts are loading um, right down the bottom here. That's, that's even with the pre-connect that we've got. They're still coming in quite late. Also, this is a slight disadvantage because I can't find the extra weight. I've got three weights on the dev site where I've only got two on the live site. I can't find the other one. So it's left in there. So this should be a disadvantage, but that's what we've got. Uh, score doesn't worry me too much, but the largest contentful paint, that's two seconds. At this speed, we're expecting it to pass Core Web Vitals to be 2.5 or under. Okay, not, you know, it's pretty close still there. But let's go and have a look at the live site as it was earlier. So this is how I set it up initially with my preloading. And something to note on this waterfall again is that I'm preloading, even though I've got two weights, I'm preloading 
two different font types. Now, a lot more out there if I want to do browser support for really old browsers, but I think Woof 2 and Woof are the two that most people are doing for modern browsers. So I've preloaded four files here. So as we can see here, Largest Contentful Paint is not as good as it was where I was using Google CDN. I haven't got much wriggle room here, but we shouldn't be too surprised because even though I may have gained something for latency, because this is near the UK, I've lost because I'm preloading these fonts. These are coming ahead of stuff, which needs to load in the viewport. So I've slowed things down. So on the face of it, it would seem with just speed testing that I should really be going the easy route and just let my theme load Google in a normal way. But that's what I've got. What I ended up doing was rationalizing that, well, let me just show you something else first, just to show you that the latency comes into it. Of course, we had varying results here, but this is typical of what we would get. So if I open this one up, this is locally loading the fonts, but I am not preloading in this case. So if we uh, go to our waterfall here, I think I need to refresh this for it to show it. This is an alpha, okay. Is it going to show me it? Let's just try that again. Waterfall. There we are. Um, so my fonts are falling kind of near the bottom again. Pretty similar to how they would be through Google CDN, I think, over here. Okay. But it actually, the interesting thing about this is it only needs to call in, like Google does, the, the fonts that are needed by the browser that's called it. So it's only with me preloading that I'm loading extra support in there. So as you can see here, then I suddenly start to, it beats the CDN because of my local connection, locally loading. I lose it when I preload. The compromise I came up with was to just preload Woof 2. And then it got me down to 1.9 or 2, pretty much neck and neck, to be honest. But I got the experience benefit. So if I went here, we can see I'm just loading the two of these and that brings down my speed. And they're kind of neck and neck. It seems like I might just edge it slightly with the live site with just one format, one file type, one set of browser support being included on the preloads. But in the CSS, there's the support for Woof as well. They just won't get it preloaded if it needs that to call that. So that's how I've gone with that. And that's kind of, that's the live site and how I'm happy with this at the moment. Okay, let me round up now because I've been talking for a while on the pros and cons, if you like, or the fours, self-hosting and the four, the Google CDN. So as mentioned, latency could help with this. A lot of articles that talk about this say that you'll need a CDN. I don't because I'm serving pretty much the same people. But if you are, then it kind of makes sense again to self-host because you'll be probably put in on your CDN everything, all your assets to bring them together seems to make a lot of sense. So there's a plus there. It gets rid of one less render blocking resource in the head. Um, and that's something flagged up regularly by Google PageSpeed Insights as the DOM's trying to load every time it has to pause for something, then that's a pause in that slowing things down and it will have to pause to get the, the Google stuff that it's got here very small it is but of course it's it's got junk in there that will never get used we won't be needing to support vietnamese language characteristics and we're not calling in all of these one all of these weights so there's that i think a big change here only since october 2020 for self-hosting is the fact that google's changed how chrome caches so it's got 65 percent of the market and maybe more for your type of site and it used to cache kind of everything. So if someone on the day had gone to a site before you that had the same fonts, they were cached ready to go to yours. Real big benefit. I think the expiry of the cache has always been set to one day, which means now, now they've partitioned it for security reasons. It's only the people who are going to go back to your site within the same day who are going to get a benefit. So now the benefit goes to local hosting where we can set the cache for a longer period of time. And generally that is taken care of by a caching plugin. It is in the case of WP Rocket sets it, I think, to six months for me. 
Okay, disabling Google Fonts is quite handy, I think, if you're working with clients, or actually, I needed it for myself. So, within the page builder, you know, I might select my fonts in the theme. If they go in and they add a new page and they go, I get confused with this myself. I'm reading drop downs for the, the, the weight I want, and it says bold, extra bold, ultra bold, depending on the font. I, I forget which one I was using. So you can introduce an extra weight, which I did on the dev side, which I can't find. So it could save from that and control that because you can turn everything off on your themes with the script or maybe the theme allows you to do that. And something I'll cover in the next video. Um, I made a big mistake on my starter site uh, in the Beaver Builder theme. It's got a section where I can set a text logo and the, I can call in a Google font, which I did. I reverted it back to the images but it still kept calling it and I forgot that I did this, even though I'm not using the, the header the usually through the Beaver Builder theme, I was still calling that in. So, you know, it can really help with that kind of stuff. Okay, um, it's going to be easier, of course, if you need to rely on a font that isn't part of Google, that you're calling in from somewhere else and locally loading it, you might as well do your Google fonts as well at the same time. Um, and manage everything from the same style sheet. I've mentioned that Google makes two calls which slows things down and that WP Rocket actually fixes that out of the box experience I've covered. And probably a key thing for a lot of people in the EU is the concerns over GDPR. Google explained this and how they anonymize their data. That isn't, I believe, good enough for some people. I think there's been some cases in Germany. So many feel that that's not maybe an option. Okay, let's move on to the pro for Google CDN. Well, Google takes care of the font licensing. Still a question for me where I stick this file. You're supposed to include something, even though it's open source to say the licensing you have. Should it be in the folder? Should it be in the CSS? I, I'm still not sure on that. They take care of that. Uh, if you don't have a CDN already and a bit of a global audience, then you're going to get the benefits of what Google provides there for and lose that latency um, that you would gain from the self-hosting. So that's a benefit. Um, I, this is a question really, um, if you're using a CDN anyway, maybe Cloudflare or something, is it better for GDPR than Google Fonts anyway? Is it just that Google's been picked up on? Naive question, I know, but if anyone knows the answer, I'd be interested in all of that. Um, Google serves the smallest file site supported by the browser. Well, even when you're locally loading, it does. If the browser sees it, it's only really going to be an issue. If you're needing to preload, then you need to add in the support for all of those. I believe that's the only way to do it uh, easily anyway for all of those. And there can be many different file types if you want to support older browsers. I don't woof and woof 2 is all I need. Woof 2 is Google's own. Now, interestingly, I think is that the reason why I've just now preloaded the woof 2 is because I think pretty much it's so supported uh, 96 you know, 96 and a half almost on this one. I'm not worried about it. So maybe the point is coming soon where we'll all be on this version anyway. So this benefit might be a, a mute point. Google serves the the latest version of the font. I'll move on to this one actually. I guess I'm duplicating something here. And there is something that we could be missing out in the future. There's a great article, and I've linked to it on the bottom by WP Rocket. They include this as one of their reasons. They're therefore using Google's CDN. They believe that is faster. I disagree because I don't think they've tested it, but they've got some good arguments. And one of them is that Google's working on some new exciting stuff about variable fonts, progressive font enhancements. You take yourself out of that, then you've lost all of those improvements that may come and other things that they do. Um, yeah, they don't load the fonts as well if the page doesn't require it. So it's got some intelligence there, which we would need to factor in ourselves with self-hosting. It also compresses the font. It's their format. And I, I could see this in the Nanito case here. Pretty much I was taking a quarter off the one that I downloaded to, to serve to the one that's getting served by Google CDN. You can check that on my data there, but it's getting like 19 to 13 KB on one of the weights there. So they're going to keep compressing that and those improvements. So, you know, it is faster from that point. You can see why people argue for the CDN against that. Um, and of course it takes more efforts and you need to understand things as well. Google, because it's gonna update all the time, it will render things well. And I wasn't even aware of this issue. This really comes thanks to Zach Pyle, who's another person in the Beaver Builder 
group who's really insightful and knows a lot of stuff. But he said he stopped using the tool that I use to get the fonts and swapped over to this one. And I'll talk about this in the next video because the fonts that are available there and with others are not necessarily checking support for all the different browsers. So on some of the fonts, there's gonna be some issues like this display on Safari that's there. Well, we have to worry about this and browser testing if we're going to be locally testing them where if you just leave it up to Google, it's gonna sort that kind of stuff out. And the whole thing can get very frustrating, I know, particularly if you're locally on your machine, you've got the font, if it's cached, the font, you think you've got things right. It's very easy to kind of make errors and get 404s with this. So overall, I think you need to know the reasons with the latency or the improvement over the display. If you know you can improve on that, there's an argument for self-hosting. Otherwise, if you can't be bothered, you haven't got the time for this, and all you want to do is to improve your score, there are probably better things that you could be concentrating on than self-hosting your fonts, and you have to watch out for the things that can get you. Hopefully, that was useful, and I hope to see you in another video. If you did enjoy this, then please give me a thumbs up, and thank you if you did get to the end of this. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.